Did you know that on average, there's about 20 to 30 typhoons that hit the Philippines every single year? But where do typhoons come from? What are the mythologies surrounding the heavy pouring rain, the thunderstorms, the strong winds, and the floodings caused by typhoons in the Philippines? Let's dig deeper and learn more about the mythology surrounding typhoons in the Philippines. Wait long, if you would like to watch this video in Tagalog or Taglish, Tagalog English, check out the links up here or down below for the Taga Tagalog <laughs> for the Taglish version of this video that was posted last week. Now back to our topic. Mabuhay or in kabampangan luwid kayo. Welcome back to another video. It's me, Kirby Aralio, your friendly Pinoy historian. And in this channel, if you're new to my channel, I'm Kirby Aralio. I'm a historian, an educator, and a cultural advocate. And in this channel, I make videos about our people's history and our people's culture and everything in between. So if you like learning about any of those things, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and subscribe. And as requested, today's video is the full English version of my previous video about the mythology surrounding typhoons in the Philippines. But before we dig deeper into the mythologies of our ancestors, marami muna pong salamat, dakal pong salamat to everyone who donated to my birthday slash holiday fundraiser for NAFCON's Bayanihan Relief and Rehabilitation Program. For my 32nd birthday, I'm hoping to raise at least $3,200 for the communities affected by the recent typhoons in the Philippines. 100% of my fundraiser will go towards NAFCON's Bayanihan Relief and Rehabilitation Program to address the immediate needs and long-term rehabilitation of the communities back at home. We at NAFCON work closely with trusted community-based organizations throughout the Philippines, ensuring that our donations go directly to the people in need. So to our people here in the US or anywhere else in the world, let's unite in helping our people back in the motherland. Every dollar and every penny counts. For example, a $5 donation can help feed an entire family for the day. So don't forget to donate and help our people in need. Maraming maraming salamat po. Now let's go back to the typhoons. Where do typhoons come from according to the mythologies of our ancestors? As a friendly reminder, and as I've mentioned in many of my previous videos, back in the day, the Philippines was not just one nation. It was not this one nation state that we are familiar with today. It was an archipelago of many different nations, many different ethnicities, of many different kingdoms and diverse indigenous peoples. A majestic group of islands interconnected with the thriving civilizations of Southeast Asia and beyond. It was not isolated. In fact, the history of our islands had long been interwoven with the many rich civilizations of the ancient world. So for today's topic, I'll be sharing the mythology surrounding typhoons according to the indigenous and pre-colonial Kapampangan culture. According to the stories, the oral traditions that were passed down to us by our ancestors, the stories we hear from our elders back at home. So what is a typhoon in Kapampangan? So typhoon in the Kapampangan language is called a bagyu. So it's bagyo in Tagalog, bagyu in Kapampangan. And the word bagyu comes from the Kapampangan word bagyus. And in Kapampangan, bagyus means wings. But these are not your ordinary wings. In Kapampangan, we use different words to refer to different kinds of wings. Bagyus are the wings that are outstretched, wings that are widely open. While the more familiar word pakpak refers to the wings that are in resting position. So again, bagyus are the wings that are widely outstretched, widely unfolded, and majestically flapping. These are the wings of the mighty birds, the eagles, the hawks, and the wings of the diwatas, the deities, the gods and goddesses of our ancestors, and many more. So wait, what's the connection between the flapping of the wings with the rainstorms and the floodings caused by typhoons? What do wings have to do with typhoons? Why are typhoons called bagyu when the word bagyus originally meant wings, flapping wings? According to the pre-colonial mythologies of our Kapampangan ancestors, the strong typhoons come directly from the divine flapping wings of Apongalura. Apongalura is among the ancient Diwatas, the deities, the gods and goddesses of the Kapampangan people, a powerful god with an appearance similar to an eagle. Apongalura is known as the Alili, the representative and the right hand of the king of the gods, Bapong Sinukwan. Bapong Sinukwan was the mighty and the benevolent fiery white phoenix, the supreme god of the Kapampangan people. Bapong Sinukwan was the all-powerful god of the sun, the god of war, and the god of death of the ancient Luzones. 
and his alili or representative, Apong Galura, is also known as the Ukum or the judge of all the souls in the afterlife. Our ancestors believed that typhoons were spawned directly from the flapping wings of Apong Galura. Because as the alili of Apong Sinukwan and the Ukum or the judge of all the souls in the afterlife, Apong Galura is regularly sent by Apong Sinukwan to cleanse our society, to purify the land. Apong Galura does this by ferociously flying from what we Kapampangans call the Timog Laut. And this divine flapping of wings results in the strong winds and the devastating typhoons from Timog Laut. The Kapampangan Timog Laut is also known as the Eastern Ocean or what we now call the Pacific Ocean. According to mythology, Apong Galura is also the sibling of the Nagarajas, the Dragon Kings, the Diwatas that rule the oceans and the open seas. In Kabampangan culture, Apong Galura is also known as the patron god of the drowning sailors. They pray to Apong Galura to save them from drowning, to allow them to sail peacefully. In fact, to this day, whenever there is a strong typhoon, many Kabampangan people still plead to Apong Galura to be merciful, to spare the people on earth from the wrath of the typhoons. Typhoons were seen by our ancestors as a chance for a new beginning, a chance for a fresh start by fixing the mistakes of the past as a test of leadership, a test of compassion, a divine evaluation especially for those seated in power. It was believed that the coming of the typhoons from the divine flapping wings of Apong Galura was a sign of disappointment. A disappointment from the Diwatas, the deities, the gods and goddesses of our ancestors, especially from the benevolent supreme god, Bapong Sinukwan. It was believed that this was their way to express their dismay over the events here on earth. It was seen as a sign of their disappointment, of their sadness, and even anger towards the sins of humans here on earth, towards the failures of our society. And so they sent Apong Galura to cleanse our society, to purify the land, and to wash off the evil from earth. But this is not to punish the people here on earth. It was meant to give the people, to give us, an opportunity, a chance for a fresh start. It was seen as an opportunity for us to learn from our mistakes and rectify our sins. Our ancestors did not see typhoons and the floodings they bring as cataclysms brought by the end of the world. Instead, they were understood as a part of the natural cycle, the changing of the seasons, that gives way to a new beginning a necessary process towards a better future, towards a brighter tomorrow. Because back in the day, our ancestors had a strong connection to the environment and an inseparable relationship with Mother Nature. They took great care of our surroundings. They loved and respected Mother Earth. And this is very far from our society today, in which we humans, we ourselves, are the cause of the worsening destruction of Mother Earth. A society in which, instead of saving the earth, instead of taking care of our environment, we'd rather destroy it and exploit it to make money. And if we really think about it, there is a scientific connection between our destruction of Mother Nature to the ever-worsening disasters. There's a clear connection between our desolation of our planet to the ever-worsening typhoons and deluge. This is all because of our failure to take good care of our planet and our failure to hold those in power accountable. And this is not just in the Philippines, but also around the world. But unfortunately, the Philippines has been one of the most devastated countries when it comes to climate change. So maybe our ancestors were right in their belief that the coming of strong typhoons were a sign from above that we need to start correcting the mistakes of our society for us to start sweeping our communities clean of corruption, clean of exploitation, and clean of injustices. Because now is really the time for us to be better at taking care of our environment, to change our faulty ways that lead to the desolation of our planet before it becomes too late, before we kill our Mother Earth. Let us do better. Let us unite and take action in saving Mother Nature, not just for us today, but for the next generations for a brighter future for our people. But wait, let's go back to Apong Galura. Apong Galura was actually not exclusive to Askapampangans. Apong Galura is actually none other than the Hindu Buddhist god Garuda. In Kapampangan culture and in many parts, different parts of Southeast Asia, the great bird that embodies the god Garuda is none other than the mighty eagles. 
such as the largest eagle of them all, the Philippine Eagle. And Garuda can be seen in many symbols that represent different countries, such as in India, in Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, and Indonesia. In fact, Indonesia's national airline is also called Garuda Indonesia. And in Japan, Garuda is also known as Karura. And in our own Maranao people of Mindanao, they also have Garuda in their mythologies. They believe that Garudas were this race of creatures that dwell beneath the sea. And if you go to Thailand, you'll find Garuda almost everywhere. It's part of the national symbol. It's actually the symbol of royalty. You can find it in their money and in the many statues of Garuda in their temples and their palaces and many more. In fact, even in the boats of their king, the Garuda is also the majestic figurehead of the royal barges. In other words, Garuda can be found everywhere. From India to Japan to Thailand to Cambodia to Myanmar to the Philippines to Indonesia to Malaysia to Singapore and many more. The mythologies of Apungalura reminds us of our rich and colorful Hindu Buddhist past. A past that sadly many of our people are not aware of. A significant part of our roots with fragments that actually survive to this day. In fact, the word Galura survives in our modern day. It's still being used today. It remains one of the oldest traditional indigenous Kapampangan last names. A last name that survived colonialism. So if you're Filipino with the last name Galura with roots from Central Luzon, especially from the ancestral lands of the Kapampangan people that used to stretch from the Pasig River in Metro Manila all the way north to the provinces of Central Luzon, your ancestors had a deeper connection with the mythologies of Apungalura, a deeper connection with the mighty powerful Diwata that heralds a new beginning, Apungalura. Actually, one of my Kales, one of my Chris or Keris that I've shown before in my previous videos, actually has a carving of Apungalura along with his siblings the Nagarajas, the divine dragon kings that rule the open seas. So to learn more about the colorful mythologies of our ancestors, check out the links up here or down below. So shout out to Agu Mansinu Pansing Sing Incorporated, the Center for Kapampangan Cultural Heritage and Research Institute led by Bapang Mike Panglinan. Dakalpong salamat King Ege Nagarang Gagawa New for safeguarding our culture, for enriching our culture and teaching our culture to the next generation. Dakalpong salamat luwid kayo. And to learn more about the histories of our ancestors, the untold histories of our ancestors, check out the links up here or down below for more playlists about the colorful cultures and histories of our people. Check out the links below. And please keep an eye out for my future books about the forgotten past of our people, of our ancestors, like the one I'm writing right now about the forgotten past of the Luzones. And please, please don't be afraid to share more mythologies from your own cultures. Like I've mentioned earlier, in the Philippines, in Southeast Asia, we have diverse and colorful roots, but interwoven roots. So please let us know in the comments below if you have similar mythologies from your own ancestors. And once again, maraming maraming salamat po to everyone who donated to my holiday slash birthday fundraiser for the families, for the communities affected by the recent typhoons in the Philippines. And if you haven't made a donation yet, it's not too late to help. Check out the links up here or down below for more information and for the links to make a donation today. Maraming salamat po. Dakal pong salamat. And that is it for me today. If you like this video and learn a thing or two, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and subscribe. And shout out to all my patrons over at Patreon for helping me, for continuously helping me make more videos like this. Dakal pong salamat. So for those who want to help me make more videos like this, show your support and please, please be my patron or get a copy of my book or any of the merch linked down below. And speaking of merch, proceeds from this month will go towards my fundraiser for NAFCON's Bayanihan Relief and Rehabilitation. So get your merch today and help our kababayans who are in need. Maraming salamat po. Dakal pong salamat. See you next time or in Tagalog kita kit and ikapampangan, Nikitix.